Welcome, I am Jedi Questmaster, and this is my first video review. How unoriginal. Today we will be revisiting the twilight of the NES generation to rediscover a gem known as Nightshade. Nightshade was developed by Beam Software, who are known for excellent titles such as... Hmm. Um, well... Okay, let's move on, shall we? Don't let the Ultra logo fool you. Although this may have been on Konami's surplus list, a throwaway title this is not. Also, don't be confused by the Part 1. No sequels have been developed to my knowledge, unfortunately. Released on the wrong platform at the wrong time, Nightshade is, more or less, a point-and-click adventure title, without the mouse. It compares with LucasArts PC scum games such as Maniac Mansion and Monkey Island. It even shares the same taste of humor. You take on the role of the rookie hero Mark Gray, a Jedi with a passion for adventure, who goes by the alias Nightshade. What now, he's not a Jedi? Encyclopedia researcher? No wonder he had a side job. Nightshade suddenly finds himself captured somehow on his first night on the job. It is then we are introduced to the first of many problem-solving traps. Later on, whenever your health is depleted, you will find yourself in one of these life-or-death situations. They serve as your continues, depending whether you will progress in your adventure. They are straightforward at first, but as you continue to lose fights, they become more complex and may require you to have a certain item in your reserve. Speaking of fights, some strange sort of a fighting system has been incorporated into this adventure game, which takes some sort of getting used to at first and will probably cut your quest short the first time. Once you figure out how that works, we enter a world not unlike Gotham City. The town is ravaged by a severe crime wave as every mob boss has united under a single entity, who calls himself... Shooter. You must seek out each crime boss, while collecting valuable clues to eventually help you defeat Sudek. One noteworthy element is the popularity meter. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is a bar that measures Nightshade's reputation amongst Metro City citizens. For taking a random acts of kindness and defeating thugs will raise his popularity and causing mischief will decrease it. Yet regardless of Nightshade's status, no one ever seems to get his name right. Except for, ironically, Nightshade's nemesis, Sutek. There's plenty of fourth wall breaking witticism that makes fun of the NES itself. This game holds up well over time. In fact, the jokes are even better today as they make fun of the 8 bit era. As for the graphics, you really can't expect more. The developers made good use of the NES palette using high contrasting colors. Metro City looks dark, but not to the point where you can't see things. Despite the dark scenery, we meet a variety of cartoony characters, although many of the clerks seem to be the same person. I'll admit, the fight sequences have a sort of trial and error approach, and can make this adventure risky as you progress. My only gripe here is the lack of a saving function. This isn't exactly the kind of game you'd want to finish in one take, but it's not a long game, and there's no hassle of having to level up like in Rygar. And here's the best part, it's non-linear! So if you fail to tackle a certain section of the game the first time, you may want to start with that part the second time around. Sure, Nightshade has its shortcomings, but I believe it has many of its own unique characteristics to make this an enjoyable playthrough to this day and for many years to come. And I'll leave it at that. Now if you'll excuse me, my city needs me.